I guess the first thing to mention is just that the Abilene Taylor County Public Health District did get notified that we have been approved as a vaccination hub for our region. Um, so from what we understand, the state's plan right now is to funnel the majority of the vaccine that's available in Texas through those 77 hub sites that are around um, the state. So, in, and this is the plan kind of right now while the supply is so limited, um, we anticipate that more of the smaller sites may start to receive more vaccine as production ramps up. But for now, the plan is to funnel that the majority of those um, vaccine doses available through the hub sites. So there are a few things that you have to do in order to qualify as a vaccination hub. Um, the first thing is that we cannot restrict access based on the county of residence. Um, we must also agree to follow the state's distribution plan to target the 1A and the 1B eligible people so it's still not open to just anyone. Uh, we must also make an effort to target at-risk populations and zip codes that have been hit hardest by COVID. Uh, they are also looking for entities that have a good registration process in place. Um, and then the, the final thing that we must do is we're willing to dispense all of the weekly allocated vaccines within a five to seven day time frame. So every week they want you to get rid of all the doses they've allocated for that week. So our first allocation as a hub was 1,200 doses. Um, we have plans to administer these initial doses through the round building at the Taylor County Fairgrounds. Um, and they are to be given by appointment only. So this is not a walk-in event for the general population. It is by appointment only. So staff has been calling people um, since Sunday to schedule people off of our waiting list. Um, so after this week, with the two days that we're doing at the round building, we plan to move over to the convention center and stay there kind of permanently or indefinitely um, and operate our vaccination hub out of the convention center. Um, so this week at the round building is just temporary. It's just these two days um, and then we'll move over to the convention center. Um, based on our call yesterday with the state, we anticipate that we will receive at least 1,200 doses weekly, um, at least until the vaccination um, production expands and especially as more vaccine developers kind of get on board and uh, get the FDA emergency use authorization. Um, as each one is added, again, I, we're hopeful that we will have more vaccine available. But for now, the plan is that they will send us a minimum of 1,200 doses weekly. So our plan is to host a hub event once or twice a week. Um, this week, we decided to split it up into two days so we didn't take it all on at once and try to administer the whole 1,200 in one day. Even though we feel like we have the capacity to do that, I think we have enough community support where we could get rid of them in a day. Um, but since this is our first one, we thought we would split it between two days so we don't overwhelm anyone. Um, we're advocating hard for an increased number of doses to be allocated to us. But with the change in presidency today and the new COVID response leadership team in place at the federal level, what the state said is they are awaiting further guidance from the CDC on the current administration's vaccine distribution strategy. Um, so they will be maintaining status quo until they get further guidance from the Operation Warp Speed's um, new leadership. Um, so we may not see an increase in vaccine doses for the next few weeks, depending on how long it takes for them to kind of get a strategy and a plan in place and communicate that down through the federal level and then through the state level and then, you know, down to the locals. Um, so we're just asking that residents be patient. If you have signed up, we will eventually get to you. It just may take a little bit. Um, we, we are asking people, please don't call the health department to check to see where you are on the list. I do not have enough staff to respond to that kind of question. 
Um, normally we have two people to answer the call volume that we would normally get. And um, at times we've got 12 people assigned to field calls. And even with that number of people allocated to field calls, there are not enough people to get to every single call. So it will save a lot of calls if people know they cannot call the health department and check to see where they are on the waiting list. And if we have an estimate of when we will get to them. Um, at the rate, when, currently, I think as of this morning, when I checked, we have about 12,000 names on the wait list. And at a rate of 1,200 per week, it's going to take us about 10 weeks to get through everybody. Now, again, hopefully they'll start allocating more to us since we are a vaccination hub. Um, but if everything remains the same, it's going to take us 10 weeks to get through everybody on that list. Um, so we have a lot of people calling saying, I signed up, you know, three weeks ago and I haven't received a call yet. We know where we've been waiting on vaccine. We have only before this, we only received 600 doses that didn't go very far. So we haven't called the majority of the people on our waiting list. Um, we, we're encouraging people to also check with their own primary care doctors um, and with the pharmacy that they normally fill their prescriptions with. The state is sending small amounts of vaccine to other providers such as primary cares and um, pharmacies. It's not very much. Most of the ones that received vaccine here locally got 100 or 200 doses and those are already gone. Um, and so it right now, while they're funneling the majority of the doses through the vaccination hubs, it may be a little bit before they even get another allocation of doses as well. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't check with other places too. Getting on our wait list does not put you on a wait list for anywhere else within Taylor County or anywhere. We are administering our own vaccine. It is for the health district only. Um, We've got lots of partners within the community. Um, Hendrick, we've had conversations with them. They are going to be partnering with us. If they receive additional doses that are beyond the need for vaccinating their own employees, uh, their plan is to transfer that vaccine over to us and allow us to use that to work on our waiting list as well. Um, so they'll be a great partner um, if they continue to receive large number of doses of vaccines. So that will be helpful. Um, you just need to keep in mind that wherever you get the first dose of your vaccine, you will need to get your second dose from that same location. Um, so even though we are not screening for county of residence right now, if somebody you know, lives in another county and later on their own county receives vaccine, they're not going to be able to get it in their own county just because it's available. They'll have to return to us. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, another thing that I wanted to put on your radar is that in preparation to implement an automated software tool called Inoculate by Luminaire, uh, we will be changing the signup process soon. Um, so this is just a heads up. We're working with the vendor right now uh, to coordinate a process that we'll share publicly once that becomes available. Um, but there may be a short period of time where the online signup link is taken down so that we can implement the new software. Um, and we're still trying to work on how that process will look. So more details to come about that. Uh, but keep in mind, even if we take it down for a short period of time, we've still got probably about 10 weeks to work through our current waiting list. Um, so we just need to, to be patient in the interim. The new system is going to allow us to be much more efficient. Uh, people will be able to sign themselves up for appointments. They'll be able to fill out the paperwork instead of having to do it when they come on site. Um, and so it will be a much more efficient process. It's going to give them a QR code that basically they'll walk into the um, the clinic with, they'll show the QR code, we'll scan it and send them right on back to get their vaccine. And so it will hopefully be a, a very efficient process um, and be a win-win. Um, so I also wanted to just take a, a minute to remind people 
that if they've signed up on our waiting list, you need to make sure that you're answering calls from unknown numbers and numbers with no caller ID. So our staff has been issued temporary cell phones um, because we don't have enough phones internally to, to, for the number of people we've got trying to make calls and fielding calls. So they are issued temporary cell phones. Some of them, it's gonna show up just a random number. Some of them are blocking their cell phone number um, so that people can't call them back and they're calling at all hours of the night. And so some have chosen to block their, their number so that's not available. Um, there is a setting on a lot of phones that a lot of people have activated for do not, your phone does not ring if it's an unknown number. If you have that setting on your cell phone, you might want to remove that for now if you have signed up on our waiting list um, because our staff is not going to leave a message. That just complicates the process because we can't hold a spot in anticipation for somebody to call us back to accept the spot. We have to move on. Um, so it is, it's a fast process when we finally get down to scheduling people. It's a fast process. If you miss your call, you will remain on the waiting list. We're not removing anyone's name just because we didn't get a hold of them. The name will remain and we'll try again later or you may get a call on another day or you may miss this round completely, but your name will remain on the waiting list. So again, just please be patient as we work quickly um, to get as many vaccines out as possible. Um, also, I'll give uh, the floor to Don Green, our Director of Transportation. Um, he's on the call and he was just going to talk real briefly about um, setting up rides for people who might potentially need a ride over to a vaccine site. Don, did you want to talk about that for a minute? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Annette. And happy belated birthday. Is that. Um, so CityLink is going to offer free rides uh, to people to from their home or place of business, whatever, a one point to one point trip. And that uh, is free to the vaccine site. We're going to do it uh, the 21st and 22nd tomorrow and, and uh, Friday. It's kind of a, a, a late, uh, late thing for this one, but uh, our intent is to provide this in the future uh, vaccination clinics as well. Uh, and uh, we are going to do that only for people within the Abilene city limits, because that is the limit with which CityLink has to operate. But again, so once somebody has an appointment uh, scheduled, then they'll need to call CityLink and uh, get that, um, get that, get a ride set up for their appointment. And from what I understand is after you receive your vaccine, you have to wait 15, 20 minutes net uh, for observation. Mm -hmm. Our intent is for the van to stay while that person uh, waits out uh, their, their trip or waits out their, their, their time frame on the, after the vaccination, then bring them back. But we're gonna be running a continuous shuttle. So it may have to leave. And if it has left when that person is ready to go back, then uh, they'll call that number again and get the ride scheduled for when it comes back. Uh, yeah, that, so that, that number is area code 325-676-6287. And then that per the, the, the person seeking the ride would need to select option two. That gets them to the paratransit operator or dispatcher to schedule that ride. There's not necessarily an actual defined area. Um, if people from Harris County in Houston wanted to sign up on our waiting list, they could. And if they're willing to drive over here for their first dose and their second dose, they could actually do that. We cannot limit um, by area at all. But if you look on the state's map for where all the vaccination hubs are, you'll see that we're kind of in an, a little island of our own. You've got a bunch that are over in the DFW area. Um, you've got some that are in more the Panhandle area, but our area of Texas, we're the only one 
Um, and I don't know what the mile radius is, but I think the closest one is probably in the DFW area. So we've got um, for the vaccination clinics that we have on Thursday and Friday, we've got 20 vaccinators. So we'll have 20 bays of people administering shots. Um, and so we're scheduling right now, and again, this is our first one, we know we have the capacity to do a lot more, but since we only have 1,200 vaccines, um, we're going to take it slow this first two days, but we're going to schedule one per 15 minutes, one appointment for every vaccinator, so 20 appointments every 15 minutes, and so there will be 20 people arriving during that time frame, but because it's such a large area, we're able to space them out far enough uh, where we don't think that there will be, you know, an issue with crowding. They're not going to be having to wait in line or anything like that. We think we have enough staff to, as they come in, they will have somebody there who will just verify that they've got an appointment. That will be a very quick process. They'll go on uh, they'll fill out their paperwork and then they'll move on to get their shots and then they'll move on to an observation area. There are two different areas set up for that. And one is a 15 minute observation area. These are for people who are considered low risk. They've never had any kind of anaphylactic shock um, uh, or reaction to anything in, in, in uh, their medical history. If they have had some sort of allergic reaction, um, had anaphylactic shock before, anything like that, they're going to go into a 30 minute observation area. And so um, they'll wait their time and then they'll move on. So it should be an, a very efficient process um, and we can quickly scale it up to do a lot more than that when once we start receiving more vaccines. With our current process of having to have people manually fill out paperwork, it'll take a little bit longer. Um, I will say that in Corpus Christi, they're already using the software that we're getting. Um, they've got 45 vaccinators, I think, and they were able to do 600 vaccines within an hour with 45 vaccinators um, using the process where people come in with a QR code. Basically, you're scanning it, you're sending them on through to get their vaccine and you're moving them on. You can see how much quicker that process is rather than to have them stop and, you know, fill out paperwork. And a lot of these people are elderly. And so manually filling out paperwork can take a little bit of time. Um, so automating some of that will greatly improve the efficiency. Um, so we, we anticipate we have the capacity to do a lot more. You can still go to the, that same site on our website, fill out the form for 1B, if they qualify under 1B. If they're a healthcare worker, they could do the 1A form um, and follow the process there. You actually email that form into um, COVID vaccine email um, but yes, it's the same process to get on the waiting list right now. We've been preparing for it. I think we've got a great plan in place. We've got plenty of community support, um, lots of people who are willing to volunteer, nursing schools, uh, Texas Tech School of Pharmacy and School of Nursing, um, ACU Nursing School. Everybody is anxious and ready to help with this effort. Um, and so we're very excited. Uh, we would be more excited if we could get more vaccine, but we're trying to be patient as well, learn from the process, learn how to be more efficient. Um, but I think I don't remember which one of you I told last week, and we don't know what the state is going to do until they tell us what they're going to do. So it's not like they have a lot of information um, information is changing every single day. Literally, they'll tell us one thing one day and it will change the next day. And like, oh, nope, you know what? Actually, we're going to do it this way. Um, so it's changing every single day. Um, but, you know, we're, we're trying to be as efficient as we can. And we're going to get the vaccine out as quickly as possible. We are not going to hang on to it. Um, we feel like even though the requirement is to get the vaccine without out within that five to seven day time frame. Uh, we'll have it out, you know, hopefully if it continues to be the same amount within a couple of days at the, at the latest.
We've had lots of people who are in that boat. Um, I have been pleading with adult children who have elderly people in their life. And I have also moved on to, okay, if you just have elderly people in your church, um, I went to get my nails done this weekend and I assisted the gentleman to get his parents on the wait list. Um, listen, anybody and everybody, if you know how to use the internet and you've got an elderly person in your life or somebody in your life that qualifies, offer assistance, church groups. Um, this could be a great service project for church groups. Get with an elderly person and say, have you do you want to get on the wait list? Did you know it existed? Could I help you with that? Um, it's, it's a simple phone conversation or it's, you know, just having a, a face-to-face conversation, but uh, they can call the main health department phone number and let someone know that they need assistance filling it out. Um, they get added to a call list okay. and someone will call them back Um it's just, you know, sometimes it's taken a little bit longer to get someone uh, available to call them back. But uh, we've also said, you know, there are people at the library. You could go to the library to get help with filling out the form. We've printed some forms out. And as we have some people walk in um, saying that they don't have the Internet, we hand them a paper form. They give it to us. We have staff enter that in on the online form and it puts them on the waiting list. So there's many ways that it can be done. They are free. So no one will be paying anything out of pocket, but the, the um, entity providing the vaccine is allowed to charge an insurance company an administrative fee. So right now we are going to attempt to try to keep up with um, having our billing people bill insurance, but we will not collect any payment from the patient themselves. So it is free to the patients. If someone does not have insurance, no big deal. You just put NA on that and you move right on through. It is not going to make any difference to the end user. It only makes a difference as to whether we're able to recoup a little bit of the cost. So we will receive the second dose. So eventually, and ours, we've been getting the Moderna so far. Ours is four weeks apart. So in 28 days, we've got to turn around and we will be expected to administer the 1,200 additional doses or initial doses. And we will be doing the 1,200 second doses. So there will be a time where we will have to be simultaneously managing 1,200 initial doses, 1,200 second doses. Yes, you do need to wait. If you do not qualify under 1A and 1B, you should not be signing up right now. Um, we are not verifying. The state has specifically said that we should not be requiring a doctor's note or anything like that to verify someone does have a chronic condition or anything like that for efficiency sake. Um, the end goal is to vaccinate the entire population who wants to be vaccinated. Um, will you have a few people take advantage of a situation? Likely, but we are not going to be able to worry about that for the majority of the people that we are seeing. They're over 65. Um, and we're not gonna worry about the few that will lie to jump the line. When you talk about the QR code, if you bring that QR code on in and they scan it, it actually links that record to you, to your name. So we're requiring ID, people will bring in an ID along with that QR code. It's gonna verify this is who they say they are and they have an appointment scheduled. Um, many of the places are actually not scheduling appointment times. Um, so, and, and there's a way to set it up where you can still have a vaccine, you know, you can still have a QR code. You're supposed to be at this site, but it doesn't necessarily track number of doses. Um, and so again, we have not fully worked through how the whole process, excuse me, will work. Um, but that's definitely something that we're going to be looking for just to make sure that that doesn't happen. 
I think that's one of the reasons why we've shied away from doing just a first come first serve because you will, I mean, we've all heard the nightmare stories on the national news where um, they're waiting 10 hours um, just to be told that there were no longer vaccines. And so we want to avoid that kind of issue. Um, is any system perfect? No. Will there be some mistakes that are going to make some people angry? I would hope not. But, you know, when you're, when you're operating um, this big of project, I imagine somewhere along the way, there's going to be a snag or, or something like that. We're going to do our very best not to have that happen. Um, but in the end, we're going to have to just work through it if it does. So we're just requiring that people have completely recovered. We don't want you to be acutely ill and come in for a vaccine, but that's true of any vaccine. That's not unique to just the COVID vaccine. So we don't want you to be currently ill um, with anything. So the CDC does say that um, even people who have had COVID, they are still recommending as long as you have uh, talked to your own personal physician, if you have one and would like to consult them and, and that's the right decision for you. Um, but you, you are not going to be excluded just because you have had COVID previously and no matter the time frame. Yeah, they would probably just want to send it to attention COVID vaccine and um, send it to our PO box, which is PO box 60, 60. Uh, 79604 and uh, and then we will do the same thing that we do with the ones that we have people fill out here we just have staff enter it into the system and it puts them on a waiting list all right thanks y'all I appreciate you